powered by the Ryzen 9 8945HS, 32 gigs of dual channel DDR5 RAM and up to two terabytes of M2 storage, the Geekom A8 Max offers some great specs for a mini PC. So does it live up to the expectations? Let's take a look. Now, full disclosure, before we get started though, the video is sponsored by Geekom and they've sent me the A8 Max to showcase to you guys. So here we have the Geekom A8 Max and it comes in a couple of configurations, but the one I've got here is powered by the Ryzen 9 8945HS. It's got 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM and two terabyte of storage. If we go ahead and start it up, we boot to the OS in just 12 seconds. And as you can see, we've got Windows 11 Pro pre-installed. And after first boot and installing the OS updates, I was left with 1.76 terabytes of usable space. So plenty for apps and games. For connectivity, we've got five USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports with four on the front and one on the back. We've also got one additional USB 2 port. Now we get two USB 4 ports, which are the USB-C ports here. We get two HDMI ports. And we've even got two Ethernet ports, which means if you're lucky enough to have two internet connections, you can not only enjoy uninterrupted network operation, but with bandwidth aggregation technology, you can combine both those connections together to enhance the throughput. Now, in terms of other ports, we've got the DC input on the back, we've got an SD card slot on the side, and then the 3.5mm headphone jack on the front, along with the power button. Now, we've also got Wi-Fi 6E for those of you that prefer a wireless connection. We've also got Bluetooth 5.2 for all of your accessories and peripherals like your mice, keyboards, and headphones. So when it comes to performance, of course, we've got the Ryzen 9 8945HS based on the Zen 4 architecture, and this has got eight cores and 16 threads and a max frequency of 5.2 gigahertz. And then we get the Radeon 780M, which is a 12 core GPU. And we've also got Geekom's Ice Blast cooling system that's been upgraded again. And they claim as well as better cooling, the noise optimized fan blades reduce noise by up to 40%. And over on Cinebench 2024, I got 863 for multi-core and then 108 for single core. Over on 3D Mark, I ran it through the Nomad Light benchmark where it scores 2,872 with 21 frames a second. I then ran it through the Time Spy benchmark and it scored 3,366 with a graphics score of 2,999 and a CPU score of 11,037. And then finally, I ran it through 3D Mark's storage benchmark, and here it scores 1,886. Now, when it comes to gaming, it performs well, so anyone that wants to do a bit of casual gaming, it's got you covered. I've tried games like Rocket League, Warzone, GTA 5, and all games performed well with high enough and steady frame rates, as you can see here. Now, the gameplay here is 1080p, and you'll be able to do some 1440p gaming as well, but it probably won't be suitable for the new AAA games in 4K. But as you can see here, we've got decent and steady FPS with some nice graphics and overall, it's an enjoyable experience. Now, when it comes to productivity, I've been using plenty of apps like Photoshop, which works great. Everything is nice and smooth. I can make transformations, adjustments, zoom, change the color, and everything is just smooth and snappy. And overall, doing some image editing, it was just a pleasure. If we head to Premiere Pro, I can happily work on my 4K timeline. And this footage is 200 megabit per second footage playing in full quality. When there's lots of effects and stabilization, it can be a little bit choppy, but this happens on my main workstation as well. But of course, we can drop down to half or quarter resolution. And normally I work with proxies and when working with proxies on this, it's buttery smooth, but I wanted to keep this full res to give it a proper test. Finally, I've been testing with Blender to do some 3D modeling and animation. And as you can see, it works great. I can happily work away on my scenes and the models and everything run nice and smoothly. Even if I play some camera animation, it's nice and smoothly with hardly any drop frames. And of course, when it comes to the actual final render, I send it over to my main workstation because a dedicated GPU is realistically required when it comes to 4K rendering. Now, when it comes to media, I've tried plenty of files at different codecs, bit rates, and formats, and everything's just played great. It handled all the formats and even heavy bit rates really well, and everything just plays smoothly as you'd expect. Now over on YouTube, if we take a look at the stats, there were a couple of drop frames at the very beginning when I changed the quality and frame size, but after that, there were no more drop frames. And as you can see, it stays on the eight drop frames for the rest of the duration. When it comes to the unboxing, you can see it's nice and well packaged as always. If we open it up, we've got the Geekom A8 Max on top with this protective wrapper. Then underneath that, we've got the manuals and documentations. Then under that, we've got the power plug and mine is of course UK. We've then got an HDMI cable to connect the box to the TV. And then next up, we've got the transformer that the power plug goes into. And then finally, we've got screws and a mounting plate for those of you that wish to mount this. 
When it comes to pricing, it starts from 779 for the R7 8845HS chipset with one terabyte of storage, and then 949 pounds for the Ryzen 9 version with the 8945HS that I've got here. And if you're in the USA, it's going to be $749 for the A845 and then $919 for the 8945. And you can also use the discount code TTTGA8MAX for a further 5% off. And to be fair, for the chipset, storage and RAM that we've got on offer, it's going to be a great buy for those of you that prefer to work on a mini PC over a laptop. And it's great for all of your productivity tasks as well as a casual bit of gaming. Now, of course, I've placed the link to the A8 Max down in the description below, so you can go ahead and check that out now. And hopefully, I've covered everything in today's video, but if there's anything I've missed or you've got any questions at all, just ask them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But thanks for watching the video and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech.